Um, good afternoon, everyone, in person and online. Welcome to our Need Tech Colloquium. And it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you guys to this uh, colloquium on behalf of Professor Francesco, uh, who is not able to be here today. And it's uh, my pleasure to welcome uh, Absalom Ezung who is a professor of computer science at Northwest University, where he also leads the, comp the Computational Intelligent Research Group. He has many, many, many accolades on, uh, on his name, but I'm just going to mention a few of them. His research interests actually evolve around optimization, machine learning, uh, swarm intelligent and nature inspired algorithm. He is uh, also a fervent advocate for leveraging AI to tackle real world challenges. And today he'll be talking to us about machine learning research initiatives and the contributions from Africa, a three decade retrospective. Uh, uh, Professor Absalom, um, we are really grateful to have you and you have one hour. Please also allow some time for questions. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, uh, Messias. I, I hope um, everyone can hear me loud and clear. Please, can you confirm if you can hear me? I can awesome. hear you. Awesome. Sorry, I'm just trying to, um, can you also see my slides in preview mode? So- Yes, we can see it. All right, thanks very much, Ms. Yes. Good afternoon, all. Um, so I'm here this afternoon to just share uh, with all of us um, one of the research that we uh, conducted in 2021-2022, where we did make uh, make some resounding uh, discovery uh, relating to machine learning research and how it actually impacts uh, Africa. So our research basically focused mainly on authors and researchers from Africa. So what I would uh, definitely be doing is to just bring an understanding of how machine learning can be relevant uh, to, to the continent and for us to also ensure that the research that we do in this area is innovative and would contribute to our various challenging uh, needs as it affects us as a continent. Now, I would start by just sharing with us some of the famous quotes coming from a uh, renowned personality like Bill Gates, uh, Tony Tata, and uh, John Hennessy. And most of these quotes actually, if we are to accept the terms in which they've been given, these quotes are coming from those individuals who understand the future role of what machine learning can, can do uh, to, to every country that would actually embrace it wholeheartedly. Now, one of the most interesting quotes that uh, have actually stick to me is the quote that was made by Peter uh, Sondergaard where he clearly highlighted the importance of machine learning in our contemporary time. And he mentioned that information is the oil of the 21st century and analytics is the combustion engine. And this various quote definitely tells us the importance of machine learning. My presentation is basically 
uh, divided into two parts. The first part would be the introduction where I would briefly introduce what machine learning is on about and the importance of machine learning within the African context. I would also highlight on some of the challenges that machine learning research faces in, in the African continent. Then the second part would be a dive into the research that we had conducted based on the different innovative research outputs that resonated from different African country or research institution within the continent. And afterward, I would give a closing uh, remark to my presentation. Now, often at times, uh, there is this question that one would want to get clarity on in terms of what is artificial intelligence, what is machine learning, what is deep learning, and all these three, uh, these three uh, uh, study or these three components are actually interrelated or they are subset of each other. For example, machine learning and deep learning are all subset of each other. And in some cases also, one is not wrong to ask what is big data? Now, it may seem very difficult to clearly define these terms and identify their use in real life aside from the hype surrounding them over the past few decades, which is what we have been told that all this, uh, all this uh, research area connotes or denotes in terms of their products and applications. Now, one thing is clear that they are interconnected. Sometimes they intersect, often they are included in each other. So you find one is conducting research on artificial intelligence, machine learning components is embedded in it, deep learning component is embedded in it. Just to highlight that the focus of this presentation is to share with you of our recent findings and uh, perspectives on the development and trends of machine learning research across the different African countries. Now, so back to my earlier question, but now I'm narrowing it down to defining what machine learning is all about, right? So machine learning in this case and in this context can be characterized as a set of algorithms that are capable of designing intricate patterns inherent to a specific phenomenon by drawing insight from a provided or a given example, typically without relying on predefined assumption about the structure of this pattern. And this is exactly what machine learning is all about. Now, with machine learning, there are different offshoot disciplines that have actually resonated from the discipline of machine learning or from the domain or field of machine learning. And I would want to assure everyone here that machine learning ideally is one of the most exported entity that can come from computer scientists. In the field of computer science, in the field of computer science, what we can export beyond every show and every threshold is actually this machine learning to every other discipline. It can be in medicine, engineering. We work hand in hand with together with those with the expert in those domains to just present to them certain or specific model that has to do with machine learning. So this field is actually very broad. And the offshore discipline can be seen in terms of whether it is supervised learning or unsupervised learning or reinforcement learning. And each of these subsets of machine learning in terms of supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning would have their own different feed or end of research at the same time. So this is very important for us to actually get clarity on that so that when we proceed with our discussion, we would definitely know which parts of the offshore discipline that we are challenging our discussion or that we are focusing our discussion uh, in that regard. 
Now, why is machine learning important in Africa? This, this is a very same question that I've asked myself several times. Now, machine learning has significantly impacted Africa by addressing some of the continent's diverse, deeply rooted issues in healthcare, agriculture, education, infrastructural development. So as we know, machine learning as a technology leverages data to create tailored solutions which have invariably led to improved outcomes such as disease predict prediction, crop yield optimization, access to quality education, and resource allocation efficiency. And each of these, each of these entity, each of these sub-blocks of the local challenges that we are confronted in Africa. Now, the rationale here is to say that machine learning can actually find a place in addressing each of these issues. Now, let's take, for example, in terms of healthcare, right? Machine learning can play a significant role in improving healthcare outcomes in Africa. That's we know, right? It can assist, for example, in early disease detection, drug discovery, personalized treatment plans, and even predicting outbreaks. We, we, we did see that, we did see that during the pandemic where most of the application that we had used for contact tracing pertains to apps that actually came from our concept of what machine learning can, can, do, uh, can do for us. So this is very important when it comes to healthcare. When it comes to agriculture, when it comes to agriculture, you know, agriculture is a major sector in many African countries. So how, what's, what relevance can machine learning play in this instance? Machine learning can enhance crop monitoring, disease detection, and even crop yield prediction. Now, this would definitely help farmers to make an informed decision towards increasing food, uh, 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 towards increasing their crop yield and also increasing food security within the continent. When it comes to natural resources, now Africa is rich in natural resources like minerals, forests, and water, huge amount of water bodies. Machine learning can aid in sustainable resources management, including monitoring deforestation, managing water resources, and predicting environmental changes. Machine learning or application is also, or relevance is also not left out when it comes to education and literacy enhancement. And I'm giving a background to this for us to actually see why machine learning is very, very important. Its application and its tool is very, very important in the African context. Now, in education, machine learning can improve access to education by enabling personalized learning experience and creating tools for remote and online education. And this would inevitably bridge gaps in education opportunities where everybody, both the disadvantaged and the opportune, will have equal access to education materials. Now, in terms of infrastructure, the infra infrastructure development, we all know in so many countries in Africa, our infrastructure are degrading at a very alarming rate. Even the so-called developed part of Africa, our infrastructure is developing at a very alarming rate. Can machine learning find any relevance here? Yes, machine learning can actually contribute to better urban planning, traffic management, and infrastructural development that would definitely result in efficient cities and improved quality of life of the citizenry of that particular country. Machine learning can actually be employed when it comes to infrastructure development in terms of making or even developing more smarter city within the continent. Now, when it comes to energy efficiency, for example, renewable energy or what sort of energy that you can think of, machine learning has a greater role to play in that instance. Disease control is also one of the very significant area 
that machine learning can actually play a vital role. Where we've seen in so many parts of Africa, for example, in, uh, in, in DRC, Congo, where we have high cases of Ebola and malaria, machine learning can actually be used to aid in predicting diseases, disease outbreak like Ebola, for example, and tracking their spread across the province that are being affected or the province that are actually endemic in most of those uh, parts, part of the, uh, part of the country. Now, it is important to highlight that the end result of every machine learning technology reflects the preceding time and efforts that has been put or dedicated to conducting a fundamental groundbreaking research. And I'm actually highlighting on this so that subsequently when we begin to share idea on the research that we've carried, uh, that we conduct, we'll conducted based on the productivity of individual researchers that are coming from different African countries, we will now begin to see where this actually has a place in each of these research institutions or, uh, or sectors, as we will definitely have that. I'm really spending time on this for us to have a clear understanding of what machine learning can actually do for us. So the next question is, what are some of the challenges of machine learning research in Africa? Are there any challenges? Yes, we've seen the relevance of machine learning in different sectors of of our, our economy in different sectors of our production industry and whatever thing. But the, question, the bigger question here is, what are some of the challenges of machine learning research that every scholar or every researcher is actually confronted with? Now, machine learning research in Africa faces several challenges that can actually impact its progress and widespread adoption. Some of these challenges include now, uh, so we have the case of limited data availability, we have policy and regulation, we have collaboration and networking, we have, we have infrastructure, and infrastructure and connectivity, we have education and skill gap. Funding and resources are also one of the things that impacts negatively on the progress of research output when it comes to machine uh, machine learning in Africa. Now let's let's look at briefly let's look at one two three of these challenges that one would face. Now in terms of limited data availability, many machine learning algorithms require large amounts of high quality data to train accurate model. Now this is obvious. You can't have a machine learning model that act, can actually scale in performance or that can even work without being fed in high quality data set. In some African country, data collection and digitization processes are highly limited. And these have often at times led to data scarcity, right? So this is a failure on machine learning research on its part because you can't conduct any machine learning research without being exposed to data. Now, we also look at infrastructure and connectivity issue, for example. Now, how does this affect machine learning research in Africa? Now, limited computing resources is a very serious issue in Africa. Machine learning research often demands substantial computational power, which may be lacking in so many regions or in so many countries due to infrastructural limitation. One other thing is internet connectivity. In many African countries, inadequate internet access has been one of the major challenge that have hindered researchers' ability to access online resources, color, even collaborate with, collaborate with external, external uh, uh, researchers across the shore of Africa, right? Now, to participate in global research community, one cannot actually do it without strong internet connectivity. This is one of one of the strongest limitations that a lot of researchers or many researchers are facing in Africa. Now, the other thing is education and skill gap. Believe me, you, there are shortage of skilled experts when it comes to machine learning. The continent is actually currently witnessing a shortage of researchers, engineers, and professionals with expertise in machine learning 
and artificial intelligence. I will allude to this fact in my subsequent present presentation. Now, access to quality education is also another challenge. Limited access to high quality education and training programs focused on machine learning has also been one of the greatest hindrance to skill development in this area of research. We cannot do without actually uh, integrating skill acquisition, skill development when it comes to machine learning research is an area that is well skill based. Now, in terms of funding and resources, lack of funding can be a hindrance. Adequate funding for machine learning research may be lacking in a lot of African countries, right? And this can actually impend the development of innovative projects and initiative. However, there are a handful of agencies, funding bodies who have been assisting in this regard, but this is not sufficient. Based on our finding, this funding opportunity is not sufficient. We will see this in the subsequent discussion as we progress. Now, lack of research infrastructure is something that is very, very troubling to us here, right? Now, absence of well-equipped laboratories in our universities, in our high institution of learning, research centers and funding of cutting edge equipment have been a hindrance to conducting experimentation and progress in machine learning research that we cannot in any way deny that fact that we have been hindered and limited by these various factors. Policies and regulation coming from government as well is not, uh, is not in any way helping us in achieving any substantial progress towards machine learning research. So these are some of the challenges that I, I just hewned out, I just uh, uh, presented to us to give us a clue of some of the limitation that we are currently being confronted with. Now, here, I did highlight that one of the major issue that requires our urgent attention is the issue of data availability because we cannot conduct any reasonable machine learning research without the available uh, availability of data. So what sets Africa or what sets the continent apart from other regions like Europe, China, India, Canada, and the USA? So a major obstacle to machine learning research and technological progress within the continent, right, as well as anywhere else in the world is the limited availability of data. I'm really emphasizing on this. Now, if we examine all the well-known machine learning data, data sets repositories, which are accessible to researchers across the world, we find that the predominantly comprises of foreign features or attributes that lack local content. It has no local content. And this accounts for approximately 99% of the data that are available out there in which we would often use to train our model. Inevitably, as the saying goes, that research cannot be divorced from the context in which it is conducted. This is very, very important. Now, however, the reality of course in this case is that you know Africa is home to a vast amount of untapped data. And this includes satellite imagery, weather data, mobile phone usage data, and many, many more of these instances. Africa, we are rich when it comes to data set availability. Now, but this abundance of data set or this overload of data set are not currently being utilized. Here I've just shared with us huge amount of data set repository that are specifically being utilized in training machine learning model. And none of these data set repositories are actually coming from, from Africa. All these are really data sets that are currently residing outside the shore of the continent. And 
when we begin to talk of, of, of biasness in terms of the way machine learning models act or treat us, so we cannot, we cannot begin to see that if we rely on external data sets that has no influence within our own local, local context, of course the model would be forced to be biased in some, in some instances. Now, the government itself, some of the stakeholder, right? So another interesting observation is that even the policymaker who ideally should be facilitating uh, some of this innovation in this direction often do not contribute significantly, right? And why, why am I saying this? Only one or two African countries can boast of having publicly accessible, accessible government data repository compared to their counterparts in many Western countries. Here, I've just shared with you the, the home of the US government's open data, data repository. And then we have that of Lebanon, we have that of Indian, Indian government. And this is exactly why most of these governments are fronting and leading when it comes to machine learning, uh, machine learning revolution, right? So it's, we can see the results of the product of machine learning in each of these individual uh, countries that have made their policies, have made their data set as it affects their government open for the public to actually uh, use and analyze and actually make certain pr prediction that might be helpful to the government. And this exactly is not the case with Africa. Now, are there actually machine learning research institutes and partnership that are assisting in this regard and in some of the challenges that we are confronted with? Yes. Now, one important thing that I've also discovered is that we have a lot of partner bodies, a lot of institutions outside Africa that are actually willing to collaborate with us. And a lot of them are currently engaging within the continent with scholars, with researchers who are conducting innovative research. One of these is Microsoft, for example. We have Microsoft Africa Research Institute, or MARI, that has a lot of projects that is currently going on. One of the, one of the projects initiative that are that I've actually seen is the big data for big problem, where a lot of uh, stakeholders are actually involved in conducting research that clearly shows or clearly defines the Microsoft interest and its impact towards the interests of the African, African people. And so another key project also they are fronting is, is in terms of society benefit and sustainability. sustainability. Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Africa Research is indeed doing a great job in this. I wouldn't want to go into detail because of time. Then another research partnership that I've seen also is uh, Google Research Ghana, which is something that also uh, started just of recent, where one of the key research areas they are leading in that direction is towards natural language uh, processing. So improving natural language that, uh, understanding is one of the key or cognitive research area that this, um, this research lab that is, uh, that is in Ghana is currently fronting. And I will discuss more on each of these. Then IBM Research Africa also, uh, with facility in Kenya and South, South Africa, they are doing a lot to actually assist um, uh, certain um, uh, scholars or uh, machine learning research um, in terms of creating and initiate, initiating different robust projects that would impact the continent in a more positive way. There are a lot of other stakeholders that are involved with this. So time would not permit me to actually go into detail in discussing each of these mega project that some of these tech giants are conducting or partnering with African researchers. Now, there are also research funding bodies that have been doing very well in assisting towards the progress of machine learning research in Africa. Now, one of it is the 
NRF, National Research Foundation. Another one is CSIR. Another one is um, we have the, the, the World Bank. We have the two uh, TIWAS, and we also have the TED Fund, um, which is a variant of National Research Foundation, but this has to do with Nigeria. The NRF is a South African based. CSIR is also is a South African based uh, funding body that have been doing amazing job in sponsoring and also uh, uh, providing training facility or providing uh, bus tree for some of our students who are interested in conducting research in machine learning. A lot of staffs as well, university researchers also as well have benefited from this um, from this endeavor. Not forgetting about Egypt, right? Egypt has several joint research supports coming from partnership from Europe and the US. Time would also not permit me to go into detail in discussing what each of these bodies uh, provide or so, pr provide in form of support to machine learning research. But the facts and figures are out there and they speak uh, volume. Then based on what I've just shared with us, now one, one would be asking, are there any influential, influ influential projects and initiative that has actually um, come up as a byproduct of what machine learning research has impacted in Africa. Are there any influential projects and initiative? Uh, are there any influential projects and initiatives so far? Yes, there are so many uh, uh, pockets of <clears throat> uh, pockets of influential projects and initiative that have actually uh, um, um, prop up based on the research that has been conducted or has been going on within the con continent. One, one, of the, one of the projects that I've seen, or one of the, uh, the results that I've actually seen is, is the impact degree drug on authentication system. Now, this, this software basically is used to actually combat counterfeit drugs and ensuring patient safety when it comes to medication uh, medication adherence and whatnot have you. Now, we all know for some, some of us that came from the region where drug abuse or counterfeit drug or medication is actually a serious issue, we would definitely understand the relevance of this application. Another one is precision agriculture innovation, like the soil cares in Kenya, uh, like the aero, aerobotics in South Africa. Now, all these all these softwares have actually been playing a very important role when it comes to um, ap the application of machine learning in the domain of agriculture, <clears throat> the domain of agriculture. Healthcare application, we have prediction and prevention of diseases. Few local application or softwares do exist in terms of uh, in terms of um, in terms of this uh, area. Another one is wildlife con con uh, conservation and anti poaching. We've seen, like, for example, the POS, right? Protection Assistance for Wildlife Security, which is a project that is currently in place in Gabon, thanks to machine learning uh, algorithms or model that have been assisting in preserving some of these um, uh, spe uh, some of these wildlife um, uh, species. Now, we also have digital financial services like the Jumo, which is a South, Africa, is a South African um, uh, software that has also been doing a lot of a lot of um, providing a lot of assistance and guidance, <clears throat> uh, uh, um, providing a lot of assistance and guidance in terms of the disadvantaged individuals within the country. Language and speech technology is also one other part that is really doing very well. So here, this is the second part of my presentation where I will be sharing with us at least some of the study that we have con conducted relating to the different research outputs that are coming from the different sectors, different research institutions, different, uh, different university. And I'll be sharing with us a, retros a retrospective uh, in this context, a general overview that pertains to the assessment of all machine learning related works that were produced or published in the past 30 years period by African 
scholars. Now, in 2022, we conducted a bibliometric analysis study with extensive review. And the study comprises of 2,761 machine learning related documents of which 89% are articles with at least 482 citations published in 903 reputable journals during the past three decades. The correlated documents were retrieved from Science Citation Index Expanded, comprising research publication from the 54 African country within the period of 1991 to 2021. The Science Citation Index Expanded, which is previously titled Science Citation Index, is a citation index originally produced by the Institute for, Institute for Scientific Information and created by Eugene Garfield. It was officially launched in 1964 and is now owned by Clarity Analytics. I want to clearly highlight here that all the documents that we extracted for the purpose of our analysis are high impact factor documents. And I would allude to that fact and what actually make them high impact factor. Now, what stands as the core objective of our study that we conducted at that period? Now, the central objective of the bibliometric study is to provide a visual representation of the present landscape and forthcoming trends in machine learning research across the continent. Now, this visualization definitely aims in such a way that it should or is supposed to foster prospective collaborative research and facilitate the exchange of knowledge among author authors that are affiliated within the different research institutions in African universities. Now, the study comprises several key search words. Now, just to reiterate that for our case study analysis, as mentioned, all our study data sets were extracted from the online database of the Science Citation Index Expanded. Precisely, the extraction was made or was carried out on the 10th of October, 2022, and a total of 2,770 documents, including 2,477 articles were found in the SCI expanded from 1991 to 2021. Now, the flow, the flow diagram here clearly shows if, uh, or visually depicts the review process of finding published data on the topic of machine learning and the author's decision on whether to include certain data or not to include certain uh, uh, data. So basically this, this forms part of our screening and discarding uh, uh, process. Now, uh, moreover, the conducted study selected only articles with keyword as illustrated in these figures. So all the keywords that I've shared with us here are the keywords that we used to actually conduct the restart, including the Boolean operator or which was used to also ensure the appearance of at least one research keyword in terms of topic. And topic in this case include title, abstracts, author, keywords, and keyword plus. Now the front page, the front page that we used as a filter. Now, front page filter has often been utilized by many researchers in their study to avoid introducing unrelated publications when conducting bibliometric analysis. <coughs> analysis. Now, the same function applies to us to also filter and include some of those keywords that were not found in the author keyword. So in web, in web of science, keyword plus, is a methodology used for indexing scientific articles, which then allows for inclusion of broader and more general terms than author keywords. So those keywords that were not part of author keyword, using keyword plus enabled us to actually extract more detailed <coughs> detail information as regards to that. Sorry, <clears throat> I wanted to highlight clearly that 
the, the pictures that I've shared with us here are the key or the lead researchers who actually uh, conducted this, uh, uh, this study. So here is myself and here <clears throat> is Professor Yo from ACN University and here is uh, Dr. Olaide from Queen's University in Belfast. So all these are the lead researchers that have actually uh, uh, conducted the research that involved extensive review uh, review study. So the key the key search word that we used are <coughs> obvious and in detail. Now here is the publication and citation indicators that we had adopted for the study. Now we used six publication indicators. With six publication indicators were used to assess the publication performance of countries and institutions. And each of these six publication indicators include total number of articles, number of single certain citation indicators according to Ye and also the total number of citation that is coming from Web of Science. Here is also some of the citation indicators that we have adopted or that we did adopt for the study. The previous one is the publication indicator why this is the citation indicator. So the citation indicator includes the total, uh, the total number of articles per the total number of articles that were published in that same year. Then we have the total number of all single country articles per the number of single country articles. And each of these are denoted by a keyword, which I wouldn't want to go into detail, but I would explain as we make progress. So where we use six citation indicators to actually evaluate the quality of uh, the individual selected papers and the author or institutional performance or country performance. Now, here we have citation and author per document type. Now, the citation and number of authors based on the document type that were collect collated include, um, for example, we have 2,468 articles. Review articles consist of 235. Uh, Proceeding paper consists of 32. Meeting abstract 28 and so on and so on and so forth. But our attention was focused mainly on the articles and review uh, uh, and reviewed uh, reviewed uh, articles as well. So these are some of the things that we have actually uh, extracted based on our data analysis. So in this case, a total of 2,761 machine learning related document by authors affiliated with several institutions in Africa published in the SAI expanded, I mean, from 1991 to, to 2021 were found among 11 document types, which are detailed in this table. Now, Please note that majority of these articles, majority, majority of this extraction were journal articles that were archived or published in ISI journals. ISI journals. I'm resounding and reiterating on this because we had a we had a lashback where some authors from Africa were saying that a lot of their publications were not included. But the ground truth is that. Any articles that will have been published and is in depth in ISI or a journal that is ISI based, honestly speaking, our focus only strictly lies on that. Now, majority of these articles, which 89% of, of, of them are journal articles, ideally should be an article that have a significant citation, uh, citation count. Right, and in most cases, we have we have given an instance to say a citation must be greater than certain threshold or a median value of four point zero. Taking it from there, now the largest number of author recorded in a single article was the article that was published by four thousand eight hundred and nineteen. 
Now, this author comprises author from 78, uh, 784 institutions in 71 countries, including some African countries like Egypt, Ethiopia, Gabon, Libya, Morocco, Nigeria, South Africa, Sudan, and Zimbabwe. We would see the effect on this collaboration as well. So the document type that are review articles were also found to have high number of citation counts. Right, so top of those articles with high citation uh, high citation number were reviewed articles. Now I can't actually recollect the 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 journal that had that um, uh, uh, number of authors spanning four thousand eight hundred nineteen. But I, I would quickly try to see if I can recollect that. So now the top uh, the five of the top. 12 most frequently cited review at review documents are articles that were published in either Egypt, Morocco, um, South Africa, or, uh, or, or Tunisia, or, or which of this uh, North African country. Now, clearly in this case, you can see that first on the list is a review paper that was published by an author from Morocco, followed by and followed by the second high cited article, a machine learning article is an author from UKZN or affiliated to UKZN. And then another one is Morocco. The, the, third, the third one is Morocco. The fifth one is Egypt. And the last one here is also from South Africa, UKZN. So UKZN has two significant role in these instances by imagine among the top five cited um, uh, uh, articles. Now, the most productive web of science category are definitely journals from electrical, electrical and electronic engineering, information science, computer science, artificial intelligence, computer science, telecommunication, environmental science, and the rest of them. So these are journal articles that we extracted relevant information that have published relevant number of, uh, um, of machine learning uh, <coughs> papers. And electrical and electronic engineering has the highest number of articles with 485 followed by information system and computer science. So this is, <clears throat> now this is publication development among web of science category. So the interaction of publication development in this case among web of science category is illustrated using this figure two. Now, and this comprises, uh, this comprises of the number of publication versus the year of publication. So on this figure, it can be seen that the number of article increased slightly from 14 in 2010, from 14 in 2010, to so 98 in 2017. Now, after that, there was a sharply rising trend that reached up to 1,035 articles in 2021. These are all our findings. Now, the highest, the highest, uh, or the highest, um, the highest one here was 54. That is, in terms of the average number of citation per publication, was 54 which is reflected in this case. And this was in, in 2013, which can be attributed to an article that we find to be entitled as multi-objective intelligence energy management for a microgrid. And this article ranks at the top in the same year that, the, uh, that we had extracted our, our data in Web of Science core collection. And this paper, uh, this paper was actually co-authored by uh, by an Egyptian scholar and a Japanese uh, scholar. Now, the number of machine learning publication per country. Uh, this is where the interesting part also co <coughs> comes in here, where we have African countries that list of African countries that have actually published machine learning articles with total number of publications greater than 100, right? So here we have Egypt. Now, Egypt 
has emerged and Egypt is leading in this category. Egypt has a total number of publication of 777. South Africa has 562, Morocco 215, Algeria 209, Tunisia 202, Nigeria 100 and, uh, 143. And all these clearly indicates the level of research that has been going on. And all of these are high impact factor research. Remember all our extraction and all our focus are articles that have been published in Web of, in, in web of Science and nothing less than that. So Egypt has emerged. Uh, so we have high number of North Africa countries coming on top. Uh, South Africa is second. Uh, West Africa, we only have Nigeria to contend, co contend with in that case. So visually in the next slide, uh, here we have a, a clear view of how each of these country has actually performed in publishing high quality research output. Please note that the only country that we have indicated are those country with total number of publication that exceed 100. However, a comprehensive list of the 56 African country and how they fared, how they've scaled up in terms of in terms of the number of publication can also uh, was also showcased and listed in the study. Now, top five most collaborative country with Africa are uh, also uh, part of the result that we had ex extracted. Now, top on the list is USA, right? With total number of publication in terms of collaboration, 431. We have Saudi Arabia coming second with total number of publication, 338. We have UK, 290, China, uh, 252. We have France, we have uh, France uh, uh, scoring, Two one one, and these are total number of publication where African countries or African scholars or researchers have actually contributed, or were either first author, co-author, or one of the many authors in those uh, in those uh, articles. Then, interestingly, we also showcased or we did analyze to see what are actually the research productivity that are coming out from our research institution, from our university, for example. So the top most productive universities or institution in Africa, we did actually conduct such analysis and we presented the results. And so our discovery, Egypt also emerged among the top list of university that are very, very productive when it comes to machine learning research. So here you have CU, CU simply means Cairo University, margin at, margin at the top with 142 uh, publication. We have UKZN uh, in South Africa having 104 cite, uh, um, uh, total number of articles. And then we have uh, UCT, UCT in this case 101, then we have another institution in Egypt, 92. We have, <clears throat> we have uh, uh, another university, Zigzaga University in Egypt, also having 69. Then U, University of VIT, or VIT in this case, is denoted by UW. VIT is appearing as 66. Uh, which other university? You have UP, 59. And we have UJ as uh, UJ to be 54. Stellenbosch University is 42. So these are the productivity level coming out from our university. And all of this relate to high quality research that has to do with machine learning um, uh, output. Now, summary of top, uh, summary of the top most frequently cited articles by African countries are also part of the results that we uh, had extra extracted. So the article, so the finding clearly indicates, I, I, I clearly um, we reviewed this article that was written by uh, Wright and Ziegler entitled Ranger, a fast implementation of random forest for high dimensional data in C++ and R uh, emerged as one of the high, highly cited articles. And I, I think as of then it was 2,405 citation <laughs> that that article was actually uh, recorded in its current time. But at that but in 2021, in Web of Science, it has 683 citation. Uh, then the other second article was an article coming from Morocco, 
So South Africa is leading in this case, but with collaboration from authors or researchers from, from Germany. So South Africa is leading, then followed by Morocco. Then also we have uh, Egypt, Egypt. Then we have, um, we have, uh, <coughs> the, we have author from Kenya, South Africa, Egypt, Malaysia. In this case, we can clearly see how the hierarchy of citation level that are coming from each of these uh, institution in Africa is actually being represented clearly uh, here. Now, where, where does the future of research in machine learning lies? That is our next question. So we've seen the productivity, we've seen the efforts that are being put in place by different scholars from different universities, from different research institutions all over Africa. Now, the future of machine learning so the question is, where does the future of research lie? Uh, where does the future of research in, in machine learning actually lies? So the future of machine learning research is in Africa. And why is this? Now, let's, let's put this into context. Now, abundant human resources lies within African's grab, right? Now, with the youngest and most rapidly expanding population on the planet, the continent holds immense potential. It is noteworthy, however, that the talented individual stands as the primary resources for conducting research, and Africa boasts an abundance of such talented individuals, which actually supersede every other region in the world. So we have young talent. Africa proudly holds some of the world's most swift swiftly advancing economy from countries such as Angola, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Kenya, and South Africa, according to IMF uh, forecast. Now, without a doubt, Africa stands as the most linguistically diverse region on the planet. There are currently over 2,140 languages spoken across the African continent. So Africa is home to approximately one third of the world's languages. The diversity of African languages is evidenced by their population, which is obvious. And in total, there are at least approximately 75 languages in Africa, which have more than 1 million speakers. So in the next slide, I would definitely be bringing or highlighting on some of these um, role that machine learning can actually play or in advancing or repositioning and strengthening um, our, our continents within the global stage. So here I have top, on top of the list, I have some of the machine learning prospective research area that are currently trending in Africa. One of it is machine learning in the domain of, uh, in the domain of um, internet of things. Another one is natural language processing. Machine learning has found a place and is actually resonating very, very well in this domain. Another one is quantum computing. Well, quantum computing. With, for example, in UKZN, we have um, a, a lab that is actually de dedicated to fronting quantum machine learning, which is being, as of in 2021 or then, which is being championed or which, uh, uh, that is being led by uh, Pet Professor Petrucheni. Uh, at, that, at that stage, I'm not sure what is the level and what is the stage in which this machine learning uh, research uh, lab is currently ongoing. Then another area of interest is the application of machine learning technology in biofuel. This is an area where UKZN is also leading globally when it comes to this, uh, this application. I know Professor Kana, uh, Eugene Kana, who has been leading a research in, in this area of applying machine learning, uh, uh, applying machine learning in dealing with bio, uh, biofuel or biotechnology or whatever name that we can actually give that. Yes, Africa scholars and Africa researchers are doing a lot when it comes to this specific area. Now, machine learning and IoT is actually something that is very, very important and very, very vital in our environment as it has a lot of, it has a lot, a lot at stake 
and it also has a lot to actually offer us if at all one would delve proper into conducting research in this uh, in this attractive uh, in this attractive area. I've highlighted clearly in terms of our language diversity that natural language processing and machine learning would actually play a very vital role in bringing each of these indigenous languages into the front line of communication. And this has been isolated for quite some times now. So these are basically top future machine learning research trends that Africa have been leading partly. And I can assure you, beside US, China, and Canada, when it comes to quantum machine learning, Africa is leading in this direction. And these are also unique research areas that African has actually find a place and are grounded when it comes to conducting research in this, in this domain. So finally, what's next now for us? Now, while a significant portion of machine learning research is spearheaded by academic and corporate research labs situated in affluent innovation hubs such as Silicon Valley in the US and in Beijing, China, Miller situated in Quebec with its impressive community of over 500 researchers. It, it, it remains imperative to recognize that research is inherently intertwined with its operational context. This becomes particularly evident in the current situation of African machine learning research community. Now, here and in this context, the, the, the practice frequently involves the utilization of data sets for training machine learning model. A vast number of which are sourced from outside the border of the continent. And we have a lot of these resources, but are currently underutilized. We have, we have abundant data as our own oil and gas, crude oil and gas, that we can actually refine. And that there is a need for a resounding call to action to embark on the journey of pioneering cutting edge machine learning research and to consistently forge collaborative partnership with peers from across the globe. And by doing so, we can inevitably create a positive and transformative impact on both the continent and the global stage. Now, in conclusion, it is or is it unreasonable to ponder the possibility of creating regional machine learning ecosystem across the African continent, which can be similar to the Miller, which is situated in Canada, that have an impressive uh, number of research scholars coming from different sectors of the university, a different session of the, 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 of the university. Now, can we have such an ecosystem in Africa, right? If ideally such ecosystem is founded and can be proposed in Africa to house a community of university researchers that are committed to machine learning expertise research, scientific excellence and groundbreaking innovation. If we can have this, and then I think we definitely, Africa will become a global contender when it comes in times of machine learning research. And this definitely will inevitably transform our economy, transform our agricultural sector, transform all the infrastructural dilapidation that we are currently witnessing. So this is the call to say that yes, as long as it is conceivable, we can actually make a difference, not only within the local context, but within the global stage. Thank you, and that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Professor Ezungu, for such a wonderful talk. Any questions online or in person in the room? Any online? Uh, Prof, I, I like the, the slide that you showed on the publication per country, especially in Africa. 
uh, for the research that has been uh, produced on machine learning. Um, you explained that machine learning is a data-hungry um, a tool, and considering is it because maybe other countries they don't have data, or is it because nothing is being done in those countries? Can you please just give a comment on that? Yeah, that's that's that is the question that I've also received. Um, I mean, uh, the feedback that I've received from different. Um, uh, scholars from different African countries who were not actually happy with the 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 result that we've shared. Uh, I know some people from Nigeria did contact uh, contact me to say yeah we've been publishing and you know nothing is actually uh, I mean we are not well represented. Now yes, uh, Messias, I can assure you that one of the one of the major challenge we have is data, right? Data utilization. Now. I've shared with us here a good number of data repository. And each of these data repository, honestly speaking, reasonable number of them, none of these data repository are actually coming from Africa or are housed in Africa. None. Yet we have data abundance within our region. So it is it is a problem, and also in in one of the slides that clearly emphasised that there is a need for us to urgently engage in creating and curating our own data sets, and this would also help us in avoiding in avoiding the claim of AI or machine learning biasness, our model being biased. Imagine utilizing a data set that is actually extracted from a different location outside the shore of Africa. And we're using that to test a model that will be implemented in Africa. Then regarding the, regarding the output that is coming from these different African countries, also what's one, what I can attribute to that is one, the issue of funding, right? The issue of exp uh, uh, expertise as well, and skill acquisition, which is also very, very important a lot of our institutions lack the facility to actually conduct machine learning research. Egypt have a lot of collaboration with the Western world. South Africa also have engages with a lot of collaboration and most of the articles that have high number of citation are articles that involve international collaboration, which most of these other countries don't have that exposure. So a lot of factors are actually standing against their own productivity. Take, for example, people coming from Southern Sudan, people coming from Eritrea, right? I can assure you, no single publication was identified in any of those countries. No single publication was actually identified from those countries. And there are a whole lot of these African countries that have never attempted publishing any articles in machine learning. So funding is there. The issue of data sets, access to data sets is also there. Also exposure to international community as well, right? So yeah. when we don't engage with international community, we can hardly know what is innovative. We can hardly contribute positively towards machine learning research. We, machine learning research can never be conducted, conducted in isolation. It requires partnership. It requires collaboration. And those countries who exactly. have been I agree with you, especially collaboration is very important with the international uh, key players in the field of machine learning. And um, it's very important for us to embrace this uh, collaboration among different uh, disciplines to, to connect well machine learning and to make it more practical in other fields as well, especially in biology, quantitative finance, and all other fields. Yep, 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 yep. So Any... machine, le machine learning on its own is a, a, multi is a, is a multidisciplinary uh, uh, field that's cut across life sciences, engineering, medicine, uh, and the normal uh, uh, physical sciences that you can think of. So it's not domain specific per se. And with that collaboration, definitely, and in as much as we don't collaborate, this is just a, the simple gospel truth. 
in as much as we don't collaborate and we are not exposed to what is happening in those outside world, right? It would definitely become very difficult for us to make any meaningful contribution in this domain. And most of it is, you see, the painful aspect of it is that it will be, it will be disheartening for us to be left behind in the fourth, in the fourth industrial revolution or in the fifth industrial revolution. Remember, remember that we were not able to catch up with every other preceding industrial revolution. And all we need is data and that's all. And the skills, all we need is data and the skills, nothing more than that. Any other question? If not, let's thank the speaker. Thanks very much, Prof. Absalon, for such a great talk. Thank you. Thank you very much.